Please put your hands together for David James, everyone. Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Um, the first time I flew was in 1976. I was about eight years old. I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama. It was a very hot summer, as you could imagine. Uh, it's always hot in Alabama. Actually, I uh, just talked to my mom recently, and they're freezing to death at 58 degrees. <laughs> but it was that kind of summer. Uh, it was a great summer because we had just moved to the neighborhood, and the town is actually called Irondale, a suburb of, of Birmingham. And uh, the reason it was so great was because I'd seen Elvis Presley in concert uh, just earlier that year. It's one of the things I'm so proud of that my mom made a point that I got to see the King um, live. And I also got to ride on the bicentennial train as well. <laughs> Younger kids talk to the older people, they'll, they'll explain it to you. So, between Elvis and the bicentennial train, ask questions. It had come through our area, we just had a great time. And this summer was just, uh, just gonna be phenomenal because I had a new set of friends. And it was the kind of summers where, you know, you would leave the house at 7 o'clock in the morning. You know, I'm, just, I'm out of here, my bike. You know, television only had three channels anyway. And I was the remote. So, <laughs> so you're out the door. And you'd play. You'd go to the dirt mound. You'd throw rocks at each other. That's what Alabama boys do. And, 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 and you would uh, go swimming in, in creeks and things along the lines like that. And, and then you'd come in for lunch. And then, of course, you'd go back out and play, and maybe it was G.I. Joe. And, uh, of course, you'd take your G.I. Joe. We're talking the full-size one as well, the one with the fuzzy hair that if you put them in the chlorinated pool, uh, they would go bald. <laughs> uh, by the way, side note, I cannot help but feel that Mattel uh, somehow got in touch with a voodoo witch doctor to instill magic in those G.I. Joes that anyone who ever put their G.I. Joe into the pool that the owner themselves would start to go bald. I, I'm a firm believer in this. Anyway, it was that kind of summer. It was awesome. It was always hot. And if you were hot, you took a drink out of the spigot, you know. And if there's Alabama boys playing and you're getting sweaty, then there's always going to be dogs around. Somebody's dog was always around. And these dogs were frisky dogs. Most dogs are. And we had just gotten kind of used to their activity in, in the sense that if you're standing around trying to decide what, what do you want to do next, I don't know what you want to do. <laughs> there was going to be a dog on somebody's leg going to town. <laughs> You'd kick them off, shy them away, big dogs, small dogs, it just didn't matter. There they were. And in short pants, it sucks. <laughs> but anyway. One time there was an older brother, and you know that older brother. You have your gang of friends and the older brother who only came around every now and again, and the, the wise older brother who kind of stuck their head in their group, you know, in your group of friends every now and again. And one time, as we were standing around deciding, well, what do you want to do? He came up, and this particular neighborhood dog had really taken a, a, a liking to my right leg on that particular day. And he said, now, family friendly, uh, he said, why are you letting that dog fire truck your leg? <laughs> We're all on the same page. <clears throat> okay. And I was like, fire truck? Well, that's a brand new word. You got to realize, not ha ever hearing it, you're eight years old. First time I've ever heard it from the older, wiser brother. You could have said or taught me in science class the word paramecium. It was just the same kind. It was a definition. It was a word. I didn't know what it meant except for that dog was doing it to my leg, okay? <laughs> well, summers went on, still reveling in the fact that, you know, I'd seen Elvis, ridden the bicentennial train, learned a new word, played with the G.I. Joe, got more stuff for G.I. Joe. It was just a great summer. And inevitably, at the end of all those summers, there was it's almost like coyotes when moms stand on the front porch to call their kids in for dinner, you know. You'd hear, uh, Jamie, and then you'd hear, David, and yes, it was Alabama, so you would hear, Junior, <laughs> and, and eventually everybody would go, I got to go, my mom's calling, so you go in for dinner, and my father was the um, manager of a local jewelry store, big guy, and uh, my mom had fixed dinner, it's the kind of place that when he when you uh, got done with dinner, you came in and you ate immediately. We're sitting around the table, of course. And uh, as we always did, we let my, my dog Thunder in, my very first dog that I ever had. And Thunder came in, and for whatever reason, Thunder never did this, Thunder uh, was starting to go to town on my leg. 
And I looked down. Now, my father was here. My mom was on this side. Now I was sitting here. And my wonderful dog that I love with, my companion, starts going to town. <clears throat> and of course, I looked down and said, Thunder, why are you fire trucking my leg? <laughs> We're on the same page, right? <laughs> OK, good. Well, that's when I flew. That's when I flew for the first time. <laughs> The only thing that I remember <laughs> is that I was sitting there and I actually saw my mother's fork let go. And somehow I got up two flights of stairs with my blue jeans around my ankle and the sound of which is the sound of the belt and the belt loops coming out of my father's belt. And I realized, I think I flew. I flew from there to all the way up. I don't know how, but anyway, I will tell you this, that in a southern home, you don't do that. You don't say that. You certainly don't say it at a dinner table. And you don't say it on a hot July Alabama summer after my father's been working that long, all day long. So the best part was, is that I was able to take a moment and explain to my father, I'm sorry, I was screaming, and I said, <laughs> Wait, wait, what did I do? What did I do? And he actually did listen to me. And he was very fair. In a lot of cases, that just may not have gone my way. But I was very thankful. I was thankful for that summer, not only for the fact that I got to experience so many wonderful things. I had seen Elvis. I had ridden the bicentennial train. And I had survived my first flight. <laughs>